Glenn Reed coming back to join us in the 19th starting position. The lead one vodka machine from Agawam Mass. It is John Catania, R52. This driver has two career wins in Stafford's SK Modified Division. In car number 84, Web Motorsports brings us Eddie Spires. All off Northeast brings us the Henke Baldwin Racing Enterprises machine from Berlin, Connecticut. Car number 44 for Tony Fabrino Jr. Then it will be the bullet in car number 92 in the competitive edge coatings car. Dan Wesson. Then it's a Joan Brothers roofing number seven for Tyler Jones out of New Milford, Connecticut. The North End Auto Parts brings us car number 54, Eric Burke. So the field rumbles down to turn number one, Matt, and there's no question about it. It is Mikey Christopher. And right alongside is number six out of what we saw one week ago, but it was reversed when the DiMatteo machine was the leader of the pack. DiMatteo led a lot of laps a week ago. Right now, he's hanging in second, and he is getting a threat from the 03. Coleman trying to pierce his way underneath the six car. Also making an early move is Andrew Moeller in car number 35. It certainly is. Now, Moeller had a great run early in the year to secure his first victory as they come rumbling off turn number four. To the front of the field is Michael Christopher. Also making some noise, it is Tyler Hines with the number 25. He's running to the outside in the fifth spot. Here comes Joey Cipriano for six. And here comes Todd Owen looking racing to the top side of the racetrack. Owen is driving like he's possessed to get to the front of this field. Right there with him is Marcello Rufano. And here comes Kid Rock, Keith Rocco. Look at that move by Owen, Matt. He went from the high line to the inside line. He's down underneath Tyler Hines. And that was a pretty clever move by Owen. We have a battle for the lead. Here comes Corey DiMatteo, the camo kid in the number six car. And DiMatteo has taken over the lead on lap number four. Lead changes when four laps. It is a lead change. And Corey DiMatteo is back in command. Michael Christopher running to the outside. Oh, what a move by Joey Cipriano. He dives down low into the third turn, picks up position number three, forcing Troy Talman back to the fourth spot. And Cipriano pits next to Wesley Parker, and he said both he and Wesley were going to win tonight. Here comes Mike Christopher trying to pay back Corey DiMatteo. He has two tires underneath the six car and now retreats. He certainly does as they come rumbling off the turn. It is Keith Rocco that just went around Todd Owen. Rocco moves into the sixth spot. Owen drops back to seventh. Marcello Rapato is in position number eight. The cream is starting to rise to the top. And that big cream is the 78 of Cipriano, who moves into second underneath Ted Christopher. Bowler trying to make the identical move. And Di Matteo now getting a challenge from Joey Sip Drive. There's no question about it. Here comes Keith Rocco to the outside. Like he was shot out of a bow, that arrow moves into the fourth spot. Fourth isn't good enough. Here comes Todd Owen. He is all over to challenge the Moeller number 35 machine. Eight laps of 40 now complete that. Leader is still Corey DiMatteo at the front of the field, a little further back of the field. Things are also starting to get heated up as Glenn Reed is starting to come to the front of the field. And Mike Christopher. He had an opening momentarily, and here he comes again. But Cipriano closes the door, and as Christopher had trouble, oh, as Draco makes contact with Cipriano and barrels into the wall. Trouble for Kid Rock. Keith Rocco's car hit at a ton as it came to a screeching halt underneath the Dunleavy's machine. That's the Hocon, number 88. In car number 78. And then in the second row, Boy, Charlie, uh, it, it appears to be the 82 of Mike Christopher and then Andrew Moeller in car number 35 as we get ready to turn the ignition key. Just about 25% of the race has been completed. And Corey DiMatteo, with a lot of laps last week, didn't get the win. We'll see if he can turn the tables tonight. Let's see what's going to happen. Don't count out Todd Owen, Stephen Kopsick, and a lot of the other strong cars that are working their magic through the field. Down into turn number one. Corey DiMatteo tries to hold on, but on the outside, look at Joey Cipriano. They are three wide, and Andrew Muller pulls off the Timex timely move of this one as he dives down low to the inside. 
Off the turn, Matt. They're wheel to wheel, the bottom of turn number one. Andrew Muller is hungry. He won early in the season. Trouble now. Di Matteo goes around, and it is the 25 car of Tyler Hines that makes contact and brushes the Opco retainer down in turn number one. And car number seven is also heading down on pit road in the infield. He's able to get it ready for next week. Let's take it up back to the booth as they get ready. I see some smoke down on the racetrack. I think there's been smoke all night long. It's been that type of night. Yes, sir. A hot night at Stafford and an exciting night. And Joey Cipriano, who about four hours ago predicted that not only Wesley Parker would win tonight, but he would win as a uh, pit next to each other. So he will be looking for a pretty good getaway against Andrew Muller as we get ready to raise the curtain. One quarter of the race completed in the SK Modifieds. Keep your eyes on Michael Jervis with that Mayberry car also as he is now emerged among the top five cars. Out in front, it is Joey Cipriano again, Muller, and here comes Todd Owen. Owen said he wasn't pleased with his race car last week, but tonight he's got a rocket. He goes to the outside of Bowler. Todd Owen shows that he's not only the point leader, he's a contender for yet another victory here at Stafford. He said he was rubbered up and ready to go as he is able to move around Andrew Moeller. He is in second, and he is going after Cipriano. Todd Owen is all in. He certainly is, Matt, and so is in Moeller. They come off the turn, and the point of the arrow still becomes Joey Cipriano. Todd Owen puts the Cooker's construction car directly in the line of fire as he comes off the turn. Watch Owen's car with a lot of giddy up down the back straightaway. Cipriano is still the leader. Now look a little further back, Matt. We've got a side-by-side -side battle for four. And that will kid six. Three wide. The man in the middle was Tallman. And Tallman trying to prevail. But things got a little nerve-wracking there as Glenn Reed. And it's Owen. Owen. Here comes Owen. Great move to the inside. Cipriano going, going. As they come off turn number four, who will make it to the stripe first? Owen. Owen. It Todd is Todd Owen, the brand leader. new leader. So Joey Cipriano got the $250 oh, for Oh, trouble now. Glenn Reed is involved, and we've got a scramble of, oh, a scramble of cars, and it consists of one-third of the field is between turns one and two. Involved is the 44 of Membrino. The uh, Catania machine is involved. The 1X of Leary is involved. I believe that Glenn Reed's race car is in there too, Matt. And there was another Same thing about Keith Rocco is they work on their entire race operations and the people that they help and consistently work with them. I know one thing you can say about Keith Rocco. There is one thing you will never see him do. Stand still. You're right. He is always moving around doing something. So uh, he should be uh, back. But right now, we are going to turn him loose between Todd Owen, Joey Cipriano. A critical restart here. And it's a picture-perfect restart, Matt. And Todd Owen takes advantage of things at the point. But just as he goes to get on the gas, it becomes a new factor involved. And that appears to be Marcello Raffano is also in the middle of all of this. And he is following Todd Owen. Off the turn, they're three wide. No, that is Muller now. It's moved to the inside as well. Yeah, Andrew Muller backs Muller. out of it. Now he is trying again on the inside. Todd Owen in a ferocious battle with Cipriano. Owen on the inside. As a swing off of turn number four. Let's see who gets to the line first. And it is Cipriano on the outside and regains the lead. Well, all that's been happening. Marcello Rufano goes up the hill. Meanwhile, Andrew Muller is right there back in the thick of things. And guess who's coming? Defending champion, last week's feature event winner, Ronnie Williams in the Scavora race car. It's moved into the top five. Back off turn number four to the line they come. And it is still a dogfight battle to the point. It almost appears it took Todd Owen's car a few laps for those tires to come in back. Let's see what Owen can do. Another dogfight, Daniel Wesson and Michael Jarvis. That's about for 10th place. But as they rumble off the corner, the lead belongs to Joey Cipriano. There's no question about it as they dive down into turn number three. It is still a battle for the third position. And it is still Andrew Muller doing a gangbusters job. 
with the Roboto car to the outside lane, and then it's Glenn Ream. We haven't talked about him. He was involved in that jingle earlier, and he's come back to the top six. Seventh spot is Michael Jervis, Stephen Kopsik in eighth, Corey DiMatteo is ninth, and Daniel Wesson sets in the tenth spot. So we'll see if Todd Owen can get some momentum and take a shot at Cipriano for the top spot. A strong run for Andrew Muller. This is the best we have seen him run since the night he got his first win. And now Refreno, he is getting a visit from Reed. So Reed almost was able to duck underneath uh, the Refreno car. The top three could fit in a hula hoop. As they come off turn number four, Matt, back to the stripe they come. Owen's got his hands full, and Andrew Muller is glued to his back bumper. That's not the only battle going on. Marcello Rapano turning some heads tonight. He's running very strong in the fourth spot, and Glenn Reed is up to five. Roddy Williams is in the sixth spot, just one lap past the halfway marker in this event. Refrano, last year's SK Light champion, he has found success in the SK Modifieds, a little harder to come by. But right now, he is running his 34th behind Andrew Muller. Now, Reed kicking things up again. We Double. have yellow. Caution flag And we have out. a problem in turn two. It as is the car spin. is on the grass, Eric Burt in turn number two. He drives it back out onto the asphalt. Looks like the Glenn Reed has now moved into position number five. And then it's Williams in six. And then Kopsik in seventh and Jervis in eighth. Let's go back down on pit road. Eddie Spires in the uh, number 84 car. Just a ton of pressure checking that machine. The 54 machine of Eric Burr also in, and they were just checking the handling on that car. Looks like he's off and underway. Hood is going back down on the David Arute car. It looked like a front-end suspension part was problem with that machine. The zero, the zero 03 has been parked behind the wall. He's in the dirt. He is done for this race. Troy Tomlin is out of this race. We're going to find out why soon. Well, here we come as we're about ready to fire them back up. The good and the of course, the contenders are all heading to the front of the field. Good start again. Joey Cipriano in the John P. Fulman drywall car is the leader of the pack. Owen is on the outside. Now, remember, last time, Owen, it took him a couple of laps to get some heat in those tires. He makes a bid for it in the upper group. Here comes Andrew Bowler down low. Following Todd Owen, Marcello Rufano. Ronnie Williams is there, Matt. He is now in the top five positions. And the black flag is being given to David Arute for leaking fluid. Here is Moeller as he is able to maintain his third place status. Sitting on his lap is Marcello Refreno. So those two youngsters are really going at it. We have a battle for the lead shaping up between Cipriano and Owen. Here comes Owen, tries the outside. There he is, making a bid for it. Joey Cipriano keeps digging on the bottom. Owen changes his strategy, pulls back in the line. Meanwhile, look a little further back, and there is the battle for the fifth, sixth, and seventh spot. Reed, Williams, and Copson. We know Williams has one of the best finishing kicks at Stafford as he is trailing Marcello Refrano up at the front. The brightest sparks belong to Joey Cipriano. Three cars fighting for the top spot. Cipriano, Owen, and Bowler. There's no question about it. They've got to pull the way. Then it's a side-by-side -side battle. What a run for Marcello Rapato. This kid is finally getting the run he's been looking for. His family must be proud. He comes off the turn. Glenn Reed is there. Williams is there. And there is Stephen Copsing. Right there. Four cars contending. Here comes Owen. Bull move to the inside. Owen strategically placed that car from the outside to the inside. Going, going, inch by inch. Can he do it off turn number four? Todd Owen will lead lap number 28 at the line. That's the second time we've seen Owen execute that slight slingshot move in this race. He has a top spot. Muller, the closest one to the back bumper of Owen, as they are able to whiplash their way out of turn number four. It is Todd Owen leading by a fingernail over Bowler. Bowler continues to impress everybody here tonight. He has been so strong in the second spot. He's going to make a bid down underneath Todd Owen. Meanwhile, Cipriano does the crossover down underneath Bowler. Throws the car in at a ton. They are sideways. Bowler, Stepford, oh, suffers the worst of the wear. And it looks like Marcello Rapano might have been 
one of the is, cars involved, and he is pointed to the wall. Similar to Keith Rocco, they're both out of the same stable, but the front right is completely destroyed, except this time the housing stayed with the wheel, so it's going to be a lot of damage uh, to that car. Hopefully they'll have it ready by next week, but that tire is hanging on by a thread and a bit of the track bar, which is actually disconnected. Also, the Troy Tomlin 03 was uh, taken behind the wall because they were black flagged and taken out of the race completely. They caused two wrecks for the NASCAR rules, so they are out of this race for causing two wrecks. Let's go back up to the booth as they're too wide and ready to fly. Well, we're about ready. It's going to be a 10-lap shootout, Matt, when they get them fired back up. Off turn number four, Todd Owen. Will he be on top of his game? The green is out. Boy, and he had a great restart against Ed Reed. And look at that battle for second. New player in the mix. It is a familiar sight here at Stafford, and it is Ronnie Williams. And Corey DiMatteo, remember he dominated early. He is back in the front. He is in fourth place. And we haven't mentioned, we don't want him upset, but it is Daniel Wesson who has emerged among the top five. Remember a week ago. And what about Eric Bergman? We thought he was out of this so many times. He is now back among the top six cars. Boy, that car was in intensive care just a moment ago. Now it is in seventh place. They're ganging up on Eric and on Todd Owen. Here comes Williams to the inside, and he is going to whirlwind his way underneath Glenn Reed. 31 laps now complete up on the board of 40. Glenn Reed continues to dig on the outside. Roddy Williams, the man in control on the bottom. Williams moves into second. Who's the tail that wags the dog there? Here comes Steve Mateo. We counted him up. Daniel Wesson among the top five and going forward. Eric Burke. And all of a sudden, Michael Christopher and Michael Jervis. They are all starting to come to the front, but the bid is for second. Side-by-side -side confrontation between Williams and Reed. And Williams with a bit of an upper hand as they slingshot their way out of turn number two. Here comes Reed. He has life coming off of the back stretch. And Reed trying to take second away from Ronnie Williams. While those two competitors are fighting it out, this gives Todd Owen the opportunity to run away. Just like at the dog track, he's the rabbit being chased by the dogs here. Battle is still for second. All of a sudden, Williams has it by half a car. Reed gets back up on the wheel. 34 and counting that. And then it's DiMatteo. And, and right there with him is Daniel Wesson. Wesson, in the last two weeks, has really become a shining star here at Stafford. And Jarvis has gotten by Eric Burke. Jarvis is in six. Got a little nudge from Mike Christopher. Now there is action for second. Williams getting challenged from behind by Corey DiMatteo. They come off turn number four. DiMatteo now forces Glenn Reen to either go for it or have to settle behind him. Meanwhile, Williams moves into second. Here comes Corey DiMatteo with Reed still in that battle on the outside lane. This time, when they come off turn number four, as they work their magic back to the line, it is still a side-by-side -side battle for third. With Williams, DiMatteo, and Wesson and Reed paying attention to each other, nobody is paying attention to Todd Owen oh. as he strengthens his lead. Meanwhile, while Owen is in command out front, Daniel Wesson and Corey DiMatteo are in a side-by-side -side battle for the fourth position. Daniel Wesson moves in to position number four. Todd Owen, the commander of everyone's attention at the front of the field. Last week, he was disappointed with a seventh place run. He came tonight with one mission, not the points, but to win here at Stafford, and he is less than a half a mile to prove just that. Ronnie Williams, the only one who could mount a challenge as they rip their way off of turn number two, and it's Todd Owen, two turns away from his second victory of the season. Off turn number four, Todd Owen, not only the point leader, but back in the winner's circle here at Stafford. Ronnie Williams finishes in second, Glenn Reed for third, Corey DiMatteo for fourth, great run for Daniel Wesson for five, Michael Christopher, good comeback for I'm a cure. Think about what.
Yeah. 